is a frozen French mousse. And these are two stately parfaits. And this is a bomb glacé, praliné au noir. And all of them are made out of the same magic mousse mix. We're doing mousses, bombs, and parfaits today on The French Chef. French Chef is made possible by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee Incorporated and by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. A homemade bomb is, is a marvelous apparatus. It is a mold of ice cream and the outside of it is regular ice cream and the inside of it is a lovely creamy mixture, which in French is called an appareil à bomb, or a bomb apparatus. I call it a mousse mix. And there are two, two kinds of mousse mixes. One is uh, made out of fruit puree with a sugar syrup and whipped cream. And then the other one is made out of a custard mixture, which means egg yolks and cream, and then you can put other flavorings in it, such as caramelized walnuts, and that's what I'm going to make, which is called a appareil à bombe uh, au noir praliné. And so I'm now boiling up some sugar syrup, which is going to turn into caramel, so we can caramelize the walnuts. And we've done caramel so often that I decided I'd start with the sugar already already boiling so we wouldn't have to wait for this process. And all ca <coughs> caramel is, as you will remember, is sugar and water, which is swished over heat until the liquid entirely clears, and then it's just boiled until the liquid turns into caramel or a dark brown. And we're going to make a quart of mousse mix, and so we want one and one-third cups of granulated sugar and one half cup of water, and that's just what I've got in here. And as you remember, whenever you're boiling sugar, I think a lot of people are just, if they hear there's any sugar syrup in anything, they say, oh, that's not for me. But it's so easy to do that you just have to determine that you're gonna learn how to boil sugar, because, I mean, anyone can do it, and you can do so many delicious things with it. Just remember that when you get your sugar and your water, in the pan that you have to swish the pan by the handle a little bit until the sugar comes up to the boil and then make sure that the liquid is entirely clear because if it is if it hasn't cleared and the sugar hasn't completely melted before it starts boiling then you run into crystal problems and it'll turn sort of granular and you won't get any caramel and there are some i think rather old-fashioned methods about uh, making caramel in a frying pan, but I think that is terribly difficult to do. I would much rather do it this way with the water and the sugar. Now this has come way down to about the crack stage, practically, and we're just waiting until it gradually turns into a caramel, and then the walnuts are going to go in. And you want for this two cups of walnuts, and you can buy these either in a can or in a little sack in your grocery store and dump them all out and then save out about six of the best looking walnuts which you're going to use as a decoration. And those will go into the caramel first. Now this is almost caramelized but not quite. But never stir the sugar. Just swish the pan around. Because if you stir the sugar, then you may run into um, crystallization problems. And this is just getting a, a rather amber color, and it's going to turn into caramel very quickly. And if you can make, uh, I think, uh, caramelized walnuts, or walnut pralin, as it is called, um, is a rather unusual one. Mostly you see almond or hazelnut pralin. In, it's called praline. In, uh, you know, when you make praline with New Orleans, um, New Orleans, what are they called? Pecans. Now, as soon as your 
caramel has turned dark. This isn't as dark as it should be, but I'm going to do this anyway. Put in your spare nuts one at a time and then just put them out and on a buttered plaque. I'm just doing a sample there. And then pour in the rest of your nuts and swish them around and turn them out onto an oiled plaque. This, this is not as dark as it should be. It should be as dark as this. And then you want to let it sit on the oiled baking sheet. This is a pizza tray until it gets hard. And it's absolutely delicious to eat. This takes about half an hour to harden. And then, because this is going to be mixed into a mousse mix, you have to pound it up. And you can pound it up either in a bowl like this, if you're going to eat a lot of it, it's awfully good. You'll have to make a little bit more than these proportions call for. Break it up, and then take any kind of a pounding machine and just pound it. You want to not absolutely pulverize it into a powder. You want to have some pieces so that they're about, oh, an eighth of an inch in diameter. It looks like that. This could be pounded a little bit more. What you would want, want to end up with is a, is a mixture like this. You see, there's some rather large pieces and some that are quite small. And the bowl takes, some, takes a bit of time. And you can, if you have a blender, you can use that. But it's in the blender, you have to break it up fairly fine and don't use more than about half of a cup or it'll all get stuck in the machine. And if you have a blender with several speeds, blend it just at the very low speed. Sometimes you have to start it at the high speed and then you can blend it at the low speed. And if you just have one speed, you just click the switch on and off. The idea is that you don't want to pulverize it completely. You want to have some, some pieces that aren't too big, I don't mean aren't too small. So you have to be very careful if you're going to do it in the blender, but it certainly is much faster. And this amount that we have, this was, we had, this makes uh, about two and three quarters of a cup of pralin. And you can make it way ahead of time. And I found the best way to keep it is put, in, put it in an airtight jar and put it in the freezer. Because if you leave it out and if you leave it uncovered and the dampness gets to it, it all sort of gums together and it's horrible, but it keeps perfectly well in the freezer. And you can use this pralin on, oh, on ice creams and in sauces. And it's just lovely to have where you can just eat it with a spoon, or if you have sort of a dull pudding, just sprinkle some of the pralin on. And then, when you have the pralin, you can make the mousse. And we're going to do a, the custard base, which means it has to have egg yolks in it. And we want to have four egg yolks. And they're going to be beaten up. We've done a great many custards before. And there are four egg yolks. These are U US grated large eggs. And then they have to be beaten before they're heat heated up. This is any time you do a sauce or like a hollandaise or a mayonnaise or a custard, you always remember. The first thing you do is to beat up your egg yolks so that they're rather thick and sticky. Now, if you were doing an ordinary custard base for mousse mix, you would gradually beat in two-thirds cup of granulated sugar at this point here. But because we have our caramelized walnuts, we don't have to, because it's going to be sweetened anyway. But just be sure that you have this little beating. See, that's sort of thick. It almost looks like a custard already. And then you want one half cup of milk. And then you set it over a pan of almost simmering water. And in this, in the, in the caramel, I mean in the 
hollandaise and baroness when we have egg yolks i always i always set them over direct heat but i found that for this recipe it's better to better to set it in almost simmering water because they're sort of delicate and you don't want them to turn granular now the first indication that they're beginning to thicken is that uh, you have, it's, it's foamy on top, and then gradually as it heats up, you will notice a little bit of steam coming up from the center. Sometimes it's hard to tell whether the steam is coming up from the water itself or from the bowl. And then I'm going to switch now to a wooden spoon and stir it around. The whole point of this operation is that you is that you heat the egg yolks very gradually indeed, because if you try and heat them too suddenly, they will granular, turn granular, or they will lump up. But so many French desserts and ice creams and other things start out with egg yolks that it's a good thing to do them quite a bit so that you're perfectly familiar with them and not scared of them. I think the most tricky part of cooking anyway is egg yolks just because they scramble and do nasty things if you don't treat them properly. Now this will take about three or four minutes and you just just keep stirring and keep looking at it. And I like using a big pan of water in a bowl or another pan in it because you have perfect freedom. You can see exactly what the water is doing. If you feel it's going too fast, you can take it right out of the water. I've, frankly, I never use a double boiler at all. But it's just a matter now of waiting. And then take your finger and put your finger in it. When it's really much too hot for your finger. It's almost at the point that it should be. But you definitely have to keep on heating it until the custard has thickened. It has to thicken enough so it's going to coat the spoon. And be sure when you stir that you stir all the way around the bottom of the bowl so you don't get any lumpiness or taken or rather thickened egg yolks down in the bottom of your bowl. And if by any chance it, slights, it starts to lump very slightly, take your wire whip and give it a big beating and that will usually smooth it right out. I hate to think how many custards we've made like this. Well, that's coming. I'll put my finger in there again. That's awfully hot. I think it should turn any minute. And when it does turn, it really turns very quickly. And you remember, I said if you're going to make an ordinary custard such, I mean an ordinary bomb, not with the caramelized one, say we're going to have chocolate or you're going to have a vanilla or liqueur flavoring, you would have beaten in two-thirds cup of sugar along with your, along with your egg yolks at first. And then you would heat it just exactly the same way. Now that has thickened enough so that it just coats the spoon. And then be sure that you stir it after it's taken off, because after you've taken it off heat, because it might continue cooking if you have a heavy bowl. And then, while it's still hot, you're going to put the two cups of the pralin in. And the reason you put it in right now is that so that some of the some of the pralin the caramel will melt. See, if you waited until the whole mixture was cold, then you wouldn't have any sugar, at any sugar taste at all. So into, the, into your very hot mixture goes in this delicious walnut brittle, and then stir it for a moment or two until you feel that it, until you feel that the sugar has, has melted a little bit in, and then you have to beat it over ice. So I've got here my old mixer bowl, and that has got ice and salt and water in it, and so I'm putting this other bowl right in. 
Then on goes the mixer, the beater. It's very convenient being able to take these things off. And then this you want to beat until it is completely chilled. It'll probably take two or three minutes. And be sure that you've got plenty of ice in here. And then as you beat this up, it's going to turn sort of a pale color. And then it must be thick enough so that it, it forms a mass. If you lift some up in the spoon, that it, that it makes what they call a very heavy ribbon on the surface of the mixture. So you'll have to beat that about probably four or five minutes and then turn the mixer off and stick your finger in. And if it's really chilled, you've beaten it enough. And then after that's cold and chilled, you beat in one cup of heavy cream. And this again, you want to beat for several minutes until it is a very thick mixture. Then in some recipes, they have um, that you, after your original egg yolk mixture is cold, that you fold in whipped cream. But that means that you have to whip the cream. And I find that this is a much better method to beat it in the cold mixture and then the cream automatically whips up. But you want to be very careful when you're, when you're beating this that you don't overbeat the cream. And this is what it looks like when it's done. This would take, say, about seven or eight minutes of beating until it was, it was ready. But you see, it has turned pale. And because you've had your ice and your salt in it, it's practically a frozen mousse already. And so if you're going to make one of these things, remember to make an awful lot of ice cubes so that you can have plenty of ice to do the beating, because it's essential that it, be that it become this thick cream, which just comes from the beating and the chilling. And then you are ready to put in the rest of the pralin. That would be 3 quarters of a cup. You had 2 and 3 quarters cup in all, and you beat two cups into the hot mixture, and then you have three quarters of a cup left over. And that goes in. Oh, this is, it's so good, you won't believe it. And then you want to have some kind of flavoring. You can put in a tablespoon of vanilla if you want. But I think the best flavoring is kirsch for this. I've tried it with rum, but I think the rum is so strong it rather masks the flavor. And so I put in three tablespoons of kirsch. You want also to be very careful that you do not add too much, too much alcohol, because if you have too much alcohol, the mixture won't freeze. And the reason this, the, you put in this three quarters of a cup of praline, praline or praline at the end was so that the mixture is cold and the caramel won't melt. And you want, because you want to have a slight sense of texture on your tongue. And then it's always the privilege and the duty of the cook to taste it and see how it is. Mm -hmm. Lovely, just lovely. That was one of the best mixtures I've ever had. And now, you've got your mousse mix. And how you, what you serve it in de determines what the name is to be. Now, you could serve it just as a plain frozen mousse in a fluted bowl. Or you could turn it into a frozen souffle, in which case you have a little souffle bowl, and then you put some wax paper around. We've done this before. I'm just reminding you how it went. And then you fill the bowl up to about an inch above the ring, and the wax paper holds the mousse in place. And then you freeze it. And then when you take the wax paper off, it looks like a frozen souffle because it's come up above the mold. But we've done that about two or three times, so I'm not going not gonna to do it again. And then you can turn it into a parfait. And that simply means serving it in little glasses. And this is the traditional parfait glass shape, which is very high and fluted, as you see. And you 
eat it with a long spoon, like an iced tea spoon. But if you don't have a parfait glass, and I don't think many people do, you can perfectly well use a nice wine glass. And that, and you just fill it with the mixture. And you can know, you see these parfaits in, in a restaurant that have different layers. And if you want to have layers, you fill it up, say, a third, and then you put it in the freezer until it had chilled, and then put a little of the pralin on, and then freeze it again, adding as many layers as you like. And this is just going to be a very simple parfait with one of these caramel nuts on top. And then you put that in the freezer and freeze it for two or three hours. But making a bomb is a little more complicated. Because you have to have ice cream on the outside and then the mousse on the inside, and you have to plan ahead. You've got to get the ice cream, and you've got to get a nice mold. And you can get very fancy molds, like this one, which is a fluted one. They're, of course, they're regular bomb molds, but you can use any kind of an ice cream mold. This is a very pretty French basket. Or you can use just a perfectly plain mixing bowl. And I think I'll use that because I think that's what most of us have around the house. But the, the bowl has to be chilled in the refrigerator. And then you have to get a very good, very good quality of French vanilla ice cream, and you want to put that in the, out of the freezer into the refrigerator for oh, about half an hour so it softens enough. And then the bowl is chilled, and you line the bowl with the ice cream. You should actually use a metal bowl, but I'm using a glass one so you can see how it, see how it works. And this amount of, of mousse mix that we have is about four to five cups. This is just making a, a lining all along around the bowl. I thought, well, this ice cream has gotten a little bit too soft, but it's going to be frozen again, this lining. So even if it's a little soft when it first goes in, you can always push it up after it. you've put it back in the freezer. And make sure that you get an extremely good quality of vanilla ice cream. This one is uh, French custard, which I got at my supermarket. See, I'm pushing it all up around the edges there. And having the bowl cold, it holds it up quite well. And that has to go in and be frozen again. Put some of this ice cream back again. Always managed to get ice cream over everything. And now this you want to put in the freezer again for maybe 30 to 60 minutes until it is stiffened up. And then the mousse mix goes in. Always, this is one of these things of going back and forth to the freezer. And now here, you see that's hardened up. And I'm using a metal bowl, which one should because it's easier to unmold. And then your very cold mousse mix goes right in. And then put a cover on of wax paper or plastic wrap. And then that gets, goes into the freezer. And I have found with these things that you really should freeze it overnight. Because it's a, a large quantity, and it takes quite a while for it all to freeze. Or you can do it two or three days ahead. But I think if you don't freeze it quite enough, it's too soft. And then to unmold it, I also have the serving platter in, in the freezer. Then to unmold it, take a little knife 
and go all the way around the edge and then have a bowl of cold water, not hot water. And just put that in and then you can see when it begins to turn around, you can see that it's turning there. That's just ready. And then quickly, upside down. And then it takes a little minute or two for it to come out. I don't think it's coming. You just have to sort of hold it. Because there's a vacuum in there. Are you coming? Boop, boop. Yep, it's coming. There. And then wipe up any little spillies. That's one reason you have a spotlessly clean towel around you. And then you're ready to decorate it. Let it slid just a little bit, which often happens. You also always have to have something to decorate to cover up little spillies. A little bit all around the edge where it is slightly spilled. This is one of the things I learned about in, when I was studying in France. You always have to have something to cover up little messes that you might have made. And then this, you can unmold it and decorate it ahead and then cover it with a bowl and put it in the freezer again. But you be sure that you cover it so that the outside won't get crusty. There we are with our bombe glacé praliné. I'm going to serve it to you so you'll see how it looks. Always the first slice is a little difficult to get out. I think this bomb, I had about a quart of an ice, about a quart of ice cream and about a quart of bomb mix, and I think it'll certainly serve eight or ten people, because it's quite a rich mixture. You see, the inside is very soft, and that's how it looks when you cut into it. You see, it has that lovely brown center. It's just it's a delicious mixture. And with this, I see no reason why you couldn't serve a little tiny bottle of champagne and make it sort of a, a semi-sweet champagne. That just goes beautifully with this kind of a dessert. But you know, it's, it's very nice to know that you can make all these goodies yourself. And all from one magic mousse mix. Here you've got a simple frozen mousse in a little bowl. And you have the elegant parfaits. And then this wonderfully dramatic bombe glacé praliné au noix. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation and by a grant from Hills Brothers Coffee, Incorporated. Julia Child is co-author of the book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Support from viewers like you makes this program possible. Please give to your PBS station.